Hello, welcome to Inbox, a special short themed episode. I'm Ben. And I'm Ed. And we are Ben and Ed. Swapping joysticks. <laughs> but yeah, that's the normal podcast. This is a little short themed one. And what's the theme today, Ed? Today's theme is difficulty. In games. In games, not just in life. Life's difficulties. Life, I mean, yeah. that would be a whole other thing. That'd be more than 20 minutes. Far more than 20 minutes. So you are somebody that quite likes these kind of games. You like difficult games. You like a challenge. Whereas I'm second, I have to do a boss twice. I'm like, nah, pop it down well, too easy. Okay, you say these kinds of games. I don't necessarily just like hard games. I just like Souls likes. Mm. And that's different. That's not just <laughs> the only hard game. What's a hard game that's not a Souls like? I think mm, I'm trying to think of like ones that like notoriously difficult. I mean, hmm, Armored Core. <laughs> well, I mean, we get well, that's still a FromSoft game. Yeah. Um, Nino Cooney was difficult. Nino Cooney. Yeah, really? too much grinding. You found, oh, well, that's not hard. That's just different, grinding. Different kind of hard. Yeah, different yeah. different kinds. Yeah. Well, I mean, to me, fighting games are are hard. I can't oh, do them for, for me, the life of me. And sports games for me can't do sports games. Yeah. Don't understand it. But yeah, we asked our community what questions they want to answer or what they want answered. Um, and they came up with some questions. So what was the first question? In fact, do I have to ask you this one? Yes. The first one is from Neuroxin. Do you want to just take I it from I will take it. Phone? Yeah, I can't be bothered. Okay. This is from Neuroxin and it's to me specifically. Your phone battery is low. Mm. Um, I'm dying to know how many deaths and patented Ed screams. I'm not doing it on okay, cue. But, right. it, it has to be triggered by, by a game. Okay. Did it take uh, how yeah how many deaths did it take Ed to get through the first boss in Armored Core Six? I see I still see that as Assassin's Creed Six. Did he screech triumphantly when he beat it? How difficult has he found the game after the first boss? How would he rate uh, Armored Core Six as accessibility with difficulty wise, so maybe like approachability versus Elden Ring, another from Souls games and Souls like. So we've got a bunch of questions there. But first, how long did it take you to get through that first boss? So that first boss, I think, was maybe 15 minutes or oh. 20. It was maybe like five, six runs. Yeah, you weren't great at it, but, you know, you got there quickly. Wow. Um, the first boss, okay, the first boss in Armored Core 6 is literally the end of the first level. And ironically, you complete that level and then it gives you a tutorial. That makes sense. Of course, that makes sense. So the point of that, boss on that level is to teach you the basics of the game mm. and that boss as with all of the bosses in armored core they are teaching you a specific mechanic in the game it's trying to get you to understand things so that boss is is it's a big helicopter and it shoots uh missiles at you and it also fires a machine gun and so you have to learn to dodge those two different types of projectile once you get that it's really easy um so there weren't really any screams and it was only a handful of goes on that one. There were other bosses that have taken me longer. There was a sea spider, which if you've got there, you'll know. Yeah. And you watched me. That took me a whole morning. I literally went on Reddit to try and stop you from like bursting a blood vessel. <laughs> but okay. Mm. But the thing to answer, well, to sort of semi answer what you've already asked me uh, earlier, soul sites. Okay. Mm. Yes. They are notoriously difficult games. Not just Souls Likes, from Soft's games, because Armored Core isn't a Souls Like. Um, from Soft games, notoriously difficult. They are games that thrive on difficulty because they thrive on the satisfaction of overcoming that difficulty. Um, but they're all doable. And Armored Core is hard, but it's doable. And because I go into it with the mindset of this is going to be a difficult game, I don't mind that it's kicking my ass. I, I might get a bit frustrated but I'm anticipating it and I'm looking forward to it. And I like that. What annoys me more is a really easy game that then throws something really difficult at you out of nowhere. Is that happening right now with a game? Um, it happened a little bit with Sea of Stars. It also happened a little bit with Pikmin this week, which really? is a really easy game. And then suddenly I started losing Pikmin and I got really annoyed that I'd lost them because I wanted to be perfect. Um, Were you like, how many did you lose? Oh, like five. Oh god, that yeah, that. I happens. know. I realise. I realise that now. They're expendable. Well, tell that to chat. <laughs> um, chat, we're not happy. But something like that annoys me more than like a FromSoft game where I'm expecting it to be difficult. Mm. Um, so Armored Core is is as much about b 
builds and just understanding the systems as it is skill level yeah um in terms of its approachability i guess because i mean from soft don't do accessibility let's be real um in terms of its approachability compared to elden ring i think it is definitely not as approachable i was about to say because i like grinding in games and there are games where if you're finding it a little bit difficult you just go and grind a bit and then you, it becomes a lot easier whereas armored Carl, you don't can't really do that i know you can grind for kind of weapons and stuff but a lot of them are locked from mission progress so you can't you can't really get a level much higher and then kind of just squish a boss really can you yeah so you can replay missions and you get money and then that money you can spend on new parts so you can grind for money and then buy as many different i mean we could all grind for money um, some more go successfully to a club, than others maybe um you can do that and then it gives you more options but you still need to have a certain skill level and an understanding of what weapons to use mm -hmm. in order to get past the boss. So you can't really grind. I think, and maybe it's just having played Dark Souls and Demon Souls and Bloodborne that going into Elden Ring mm. just felt natural in terms of controls, in terms of you are a human on the ground. Um, Armored Core, you're a mech. You're flying around all over the place. It's 360 combat with things flying overhead and underneath you, and it's much more vertical. Yeah. So that takes a bit of time to get used to, and therefore is not very approachable because, as I said, the tutorial comes after you've done the first boss, which is, for some people, the most difficult. So it's not exactly an approachable game. But so I'm trying to find where the other answers are. But as a as yeah. a as a Souls fan, I feel like. It, like I say, it's not a Souls like before anyone comes for me. Mm -hmm. But as a Souls fan and as a From Software fan, I feel like I've got into Armored Core relatively easily. Yeah. But in general, no, their games are not approachable <laughs> at all. And Armored Core is is difficult, but also it's not. It's actually really easy. The regular enemies, like one shot, dead, done. Mm. The only hard thing is the bosses. Yeah. Yeah, I saw you doing a quest where it was just going around killing some people and yeah, killing some mechs. Absolute and piece like, of this. Yeah. Okay, I found it because I remember it went in the inbox. We not... have we have a special yeah, channel for I it. I didn't now. know that. Uh, Fast Talking Matt says, are there any games where you've had to change the difficulty to easier in the middle of playing and any that you've actually made harder? So the one, I, I can answer this one. I mean, you can as well. But the one that I think both of us have done that where we've made it easier to just make the game more enjoyable was Baldur's Gate Take 3. three. <laughs> yeah, Baldur's Gate 3. It was, because that's a game where you just want to enjoy the story. Yes, you want a bit of a challenge and you still get a challenge with, I think it's like Adventurer or there's something, it doesn't even sound, I think it might be Adventure Mode or something. It's, it's not easy um, compared to the normal version, but it was still a bit of a challenge, but you're not bashing your head against the wall and you can enjoy the story and you still feel rewarded when you go and you know, beat something. Um, but for me, yeah, when you said, is there a game that you've made more difficult? Interesting. So Persona 5 I played and I wanted to kind of whiz through it because everybody was like, oh, the story is incredible. It's 120 hours. And I was like, 120 hours? I'm not sitting here playing and repeating levels and beating bosses like multiple times or trying to beat bosses multiple times if the game is 120 hours. So I bopped it down to very easy. Now there's different levels. There's easy, very easy. Oh no, I think it's even below that. I think it's safe mode. It's called. And I think if you if somebody faints or if you all faint, then you kind of get a, a second burst of energy. And right. there are lots of things. And it's it's you can it's like invincibility mode pretty much. Uh, you can never lose. And I was like, you know what? I'll do that and just enjoy the story. But within about an hour, I was bored. I'm like, I need a bit of challenge. However, with Persona Five. You can't go out of that safe mode. You can't increase the difficulty. So you can decrease, but you yeah. can't increase. You can decrease it down to easy or maybe even very easy, but the safe mode is like locked. As yeah. soon as you switch to that, you can't go back. So, and that was actually the furthest I'd ever got in it. And ever since then, I'm, you know, at the moment I've beaten the first dungeon a little bit after that first dungeon on the Switch, which I will go back to when I haven't got a million games that I want to finish for our um, game of the year discussion. Was that normal mode? So yes, that is that is normal mode. And I think I will stick to that. And like I said, it's a game I think you can grind if you do find it a little bit difficult, but I don't think it's anywhere near as bad as, as old JRPGs. And... Uh, yeah, you can grind a little bit. Also, you're playing Royal, right? Yes. Because Royal, they made easier compared to the original. So yeah. there's that as well. So yeah, and I'm really, really enjoying that. And that, sometimes you do need a challenge. I can't think of any other games 
I have recently played a game that I put into hard mode. And I can't remember what it was, which is really annoying me now. Can you remember? No, to be honest. Because I was like, oh, this is really difficult. I mean, things like Beat Saber, but that's just, uh, you know, oh, uh, it's yeah, a challenge. I, yeah, I mean, if you want to go down the music route, then yeah, I mean, Guitar Hero, when I first got that, I thought, well, I'll start on easy and I'll work up to it. And was literally like, I'm five-starring everything first time. This is ridiculous. Whacked mm. it up to very hard and was like, oh, this is a nice challenge for me. Um, some things, I mean, music games, I guess I'm quite good at. But got so rhythm. Yes, so Those things hips. like that, yeah, you want to change the difficulty. Um, so answer for me, again, Baldur's Gate 3. Oh, I remember what it was. Um, Boring. F1. Oh, <laughs> sure. I put it as, um, I think it's like professional. No, I think it's professional's max, and then it's like, I oh know it's expert. Pa- I don't know. It's, it's the one above normal because I was, I was bored of winning. <laughs> wow. Well, there you go. It just didn't feel realistic. <laughs> so for me, yeah, Baldur's Gate 3, I've dropped... And the thing is, I mean, you say like you don't want a challenge, you want to enjoy the story. I still enjoy a challenge. In yeah, the you want combat. a bit of a challenge, yeah. And like you say, there is still a bit of a challenge on the lower difficulty. Mm-hmm. I think for me, it was more that I'm just not familiar with D&D. So even just things like the terminology was not clear to me. Yeah, like 3D, 20, and all that. I'm like, no yeah. idea what that means. So I want the chance to learn about that, but I want the game to teach me. And Baldur's Gate, I think, is not very good at teaching you that. It sort of assumes you have a bit of knowledge. So um, I have bumped that down. And I I remember when I did that, that evening, I achieved more in a couple of hours than I'd done in a week up yeah. until that point. And did you feel more engaged with it as well? Yeah. And and normally I'm very much a bit of a stickler for I want a challenge and I don't want to go down to easy Genuinely, mode. like, I mean, you got... Really, really angry, really stressed at and binned it. In fact, you uninstalled it on stream, um, Kenna, Bridge of Spirits, and I and because of yep. it being difficult. And I was like, Did you try putting it too easy? You're like, No. No. No, I didn't do that. But also the game itself annoyed me. So there we go. Yeah. To answer the other bit of the question, um, and this actually answers both parts of that question for me, is the Witcher 3. So when I first started that game. I read somewhere, don't play it on normal or easy. You should play it on hard mode because hard mode makes you feel more like a witcher. You have to use the oil. Because you and... have to think about the oils. You have to research the enemies. You have to really understand the creatures. And so it makes you feel more like a witcher that you're having to research and hunt. And it's not just, you know, bash buttons to kill things. Yeah. Um, it was so hard. And having not played a Witcher game before, I was completely lost in that, Mm. trying to do that. Um, And also, I think you're something like you're when you meditate, you don't recover health on hard mode. So you are completely reliant on food and potions, Mm. which then I just didn't know where to find them, how to make them, any of that. And I was like, this is ridiculous. So I dropped it to normal and immediately again had a much better time. Um, yeah. so for me, yeah, that was a game that I upped the difficulty and then was like, no, nope, not doing this. And there is some, put down. there are some things that don't necessarily, there are some games that don't necessarily have a difficulty option, but they'll have some things that will make it easier for you. For example, Final Fantasy 16, where you've got the rings that will time your dodge or they'll time will slow down when you can dodge something. Um, and I use those when I was playing it, I was, there was a bit where I'm like, I want to get through it quite quickly, but I don't want to kind of do all the side stuff to get a better, you know, better XP or whatever. I just want to kind of focus on the main story. So I equipped a couple of those. Um, and because some of the boss battles can be quite long and I didn't want to have to redo them. So I, I equipped them. But yeah, I mean, those kind of games, I think sea of, um, sea of Stars has that as well, doesn't it? Yes, it has equipable... Um, I can't remember what they call them now. Is it runes or something like that? I think they call them. Um, yeah. Which which helps with the combat in terms of the button presses. So when you attack and defend, you have to time your button prompts. And there are these assists, basically, that, that help you do that. Um, I've not used those. I'm quite happy without them. But I think it's great that it's there. Mm. Um, I don't think that that should be... As with Final Fantasy sixteen, I don't think that should be an item that you have mm. to gain and equip. I think it's something that should just be an option in a menu for people. Yeah, I was playing a game recently where they did just have an option like that that you could turn on and off. I can't remember what it was, but it's usually like smaller indie games that allow you to do that. Like Celeste, you can turn on invincibility or you can turn on like an extra jump and various other things just from the menu. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about difficulty, obviously. I mean, now we're going to get into accessibility, but 
you know, difficulty is different for different people. Everyone has a different level. So having some options to be able to, mm. to amend that to the sort of difficulty and the right sort of challenge that you want is a good thing. Um, and actually I switched down to I, um, Starfield. I switched down to easy because I was playing it on console and first person shooters. Can't aim. I can't aim and I'm, I, there's limited ammo in that game and I needed to make sure that I was not going to just be running around hatcheting everybody because I'd run out of ammo. See, I'd be the opposite. I can't play with a mouse and keyboard. Uh, I can't I can't click to shoot. Doesn't make sense to me. I, okay. need, I need a controller. Next question. Are there any game... Wait, no, I've done that one. Uh, what's your default difficulty? Do you always go for normal or does it depend on the type of game? Going into a Souls game, knowing it's going to be hard, do you go for easy? Well, Souls games, unfortunately, don't have easy modes unless you've got like mods um, in them. But my default is... I mean, normally it's normal to start with, but I do not feel guilty about switching something too easy, especially if I'm kind of in a bit of a rush. I am also normal. Well, no one's normal. I, um, I will play games on normal because I think my my mindset, at least, is if if a developer is trying to give a certain balance or a certain experience, that normal is the kind of, the level they're aiming for easy is if you want it to be easier you don't want as much of a challenge then let's you know debuff it and if people want more of a challenge then let's make it hard in a way that maybe isn't as balanced so for me what i want is a balanced experience that the developers have tuned so you're saying that normal mode is the way that it should be played no that's a pretty much what you're saying, pretty much what you're <laughs> saying which is quite awful quite a horrible thing to say that's not what i meant but like games can be played, like developers will intend intentionally have like easy mode, normal, how they're not just popping, making, you know, enemies harder or you true, doing more attack true, true. I, I, Okay, so I guess maybe normal means average. And you For take it of, personally, don't you, if you well, don't I beat do, a game? I do, and that's where I am a dick. You're not a dick, you're just very, <laughs> very angry. Ed gets incredibly <laughs> angry and shouty. He's never violent. To me, anyway, to the controller. No, I never would be. Of course not. No. To the controller, I feel like that thing might be... Being... No, I might want to throw it, but then I'll carefully place it on a cushion and just <laughs> scream instead. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, but you take that like as a personal insult. If that game is yeah. beating you, if a boss has beaten you, it's saying that you're not good enough. Yeah. It's genuinely... Gen I'm not, <laughs> it's not like genuinely <laughs> he is saying that that is... So that's upsetting for you. Um, yeah, I can't remember what the other, what was the question again going? There are games though, where I will play on easy because that is more realistic. God of War and Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. I'm a fucking Jedi. I'm going to destroy people. I'm not going to have fucking stormtroopers killing me. You're a Padawan. I don't know what that is, but I'm a Jedi. <laughs> I'm a Jedi. I'm going to kill people. And God of War. I'm a freaking God. Why am I losing to a random goblin in a cave? I'm not. I'm a god. I'm the god of war. So therefore, I'm going to go in there easy and just destroy everything. So those two games, I will sense. play easy. That because sense. that's... Like, their lives are easy. A Jedi's life is just... You know, they wiggle their stick and people split in half. I mean, that sounds really... Wow, coming from someone who's clearly never seen Star Wars before. I've seen Star Wars. And they wiggle sticks, do they? They've got the little glow sticks that they uh, cut people with. Oh, God, move on. Next question. <laughs> okay, next question for Mr. Wibble. How often are you tempted to just pick a lower difficulty because you know you can finish the game quickly? Yes. If, <laughs> if I'll start not, and then I'll be like, you know what? I want to rush this, especially if it's a game that maybe hasn't come out yet and I want to kind of rush through it. I think for me it depends how much I'm enjoying it because I like to have... I like to play on normal and, and have that experience. Um, and sometimes if I'm... Okay, so for instance, if I was playing a game for work mm. and I needed to get through it quickly and maybe my priority was more the story and the setting as opposed to combat, say, yeah. then I might bump it down to easy just to get through it quicker. Yeah, um, That is how I played Resident Evil Village because I was given like mm. a night or two nights yeah, to play were. through it. So I played that on easy mode and still loved it. Oh, I played on easy mode because I played it in, well, I played seven in VR. Yeah. So there's no way on earth I was going to play that on hard mode. 
Um, I think if I was enjoying a game but was like, Do you know what, I've got a backlog and loads of stuff, I kind of just want to get through it, then maybe I would bump it to easy. If it's one that you're not really wanting to kind of get lost in and have the full experience of however long it takes. But there are things like... Yeah, I um, think I might have played Cyberpunk on easy. We've played a game on easy quite recently, Final Fantasy 1. With all the little mods and all the speeding up and... I that mean, kind of that wasn't easy mode, but that... I suppose it kind of is. Yeah. Because you can... Yeah, you can speed it up and you can you can bump up your experience points. And yeah, I played that not because I wanted to spend hours grinding, but because I wanted to experience the story exactly. and the setting. So actually, yeah, that is a very good example. Uh, yeah, and just before we go, I was going to say about mods as well, um, which is reminds me, I need to download the fishing mod for Stardew. Because that fishing game is way too difficult for me. Um... So yeah, you can always download mods as well, but it tends to only be on PC. In fact, yeah. I think, well, there are, I think there's like Bethesda, you can get mods on those kind of games, but they're kind of all pre-approved. Yeah. Um, any last words on difficulty in games? Because yeah, you are a sucker for punishment. I mean, I'm sorry for my earlier comments, apparently. Um, no, no, you will. <laughs> don't apologize to me. Apologize to the people. Yeah, the, you've offended. Um, Saying that no, they're not I, playing a game properly. What I mean is that I am incredibly average and I want the average experience. Yeah, just an average white dude. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> so therefore, everything, yeah, normal. What about if you had, mm, what about if it was a game with four difficulties and it didn't say exactly which one was like the average one? Which are the two in the middle? Oh, would you then pick? there's not one in the middle. Yeah. Oh, no, that's, you that's can't a great do that question. To me. No, you a, can't do such that. Such a good me. question. Oh, God. What would you pick? Would you pick the one slightly above or the one below? I think it depends on the kind of game. And it depends on... I think it also depends on how long that game is. Because if a game... If it was maybe like a four or five hour game, then I'd probably go for the higher one to be like, okay, I'll. it's a short game anyway, so I'll give myself a bit of a challenge while I play. If that was a hundred hour RPG, I might bump it down. Yeah. Um, and I think I'd thinking have to... I'll get through that quicker. But I think to your point earlier about Persona, the important thing with that is let people change the difficulty if they want to. Yeah. Don't lock them in from the beginning. Because then if I start on a higher one and think, actually, this is too hard. I want to, I want to bump it down. Yeah. Give people the chance to do that or vice versa. Yeah, exactly. I think also I'd have a look at the reviews and see if the combat, if that's what it is, is worth it. Like if there, if it is kind of a bit dodgy combat and it's frustrating and it's not very easy, definitely the lower one. But if it's something like, like Dark Souls, like even Jedi Fallen Order, that they have really kind of clean combat that just feels really good. Maybe you want to set yourself a challenge because you know that sometimes you just know that it's not the game that's frustrating you. It's your own ability. And so that can be improved. Yeah. Another right. thing I'll say just okay. to finish up is um, is about playing games again a second time because I think a lot of the time or, or maybe there's an assumption of you play a game on normal mode and then it unlocks hard difficulty and you play it again with more of a challenge. I actually do the opposite of that. So I'll play it on normal and then if I really enjoyed it, maybe a year later I'm like, oh, I really fancy playing that again. But maybe I just want a fun mm. experience with it and so i'll just play through it again on easy mode yeah. so i'm much more much more likely to pick easy mode or a lower difficulty if i actually know what i'm doing so you didn't do because Zelda I, just want, mode. I just want a breezy experience no i can't be bothered with that 16 you did though the final fantasy mode but i think you had powers to make it a bit easier didn't you well that's the thing that wasn't really difficult mm. it's just it matches the level that you are at by the time you finished one playthrough. Also, yeah. it was needed for the Platinum, so I did it for yeah. that just because I liked it. The 7 remake, that though, can get in the bin. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, I... Oh, I was sorry, I won't bring I that up. I just got the final boss and then I get the Platinum and I I, I can't. I look, can't. For, look at the guide. I can do it for you. All, All right. right, then. Thank you very, very much for watching. Watching, yeah, we did it visually for once watching and listening Inbox. yeah um with your eyes and your ears exactly go to swapenjoysticks.com and there you can find all our podcasting bits and bobs you can all the links to all our podcasts on spotify apple amazon whatever rss player or just go and search for swapping joysticks on your podcast player because we stick this inbox in your feed but yeah we'll we're on youtube as well nice where can we find you ed you can find me at ed underscore knights on most of the social medias perfect and i am biggest venice or Biggest Venice 1. Depends. Just find me wherever. 
if you want to join in with questions for us for the next theme, mm. where can people go? Go to discord.gg slash biggestbenus. And if you click that you've read all the rules, you'll then be able to go and uh, answer questions for the next inbox. Because the next inbox question, I believe, is going to be this weekend or early next week. So there you go. Nice. Thanks very much for watching. Bye. Bye.